Hello everybody, I am the Son of the Morning and I'm here to bring you another Ye Old Comic Con Modern Comic Review. Uh, I say that because uh, right now I'm only doing modern comics, but uh, as time goes on, I will be covering some classic uh, issues, graphic novels, things like that. Uh, so today on this video, we're going to be covering the first two uh, issues of uh, Al Ewing's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I will admit I am a huge Guardians of the Galaxy fan. Uh, uh, I'd have to say that those two movies, um, with the exception of Infinity War, the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies are my favorite uh, MCU movies that have come out so far. I'm not going to try to pretend like... Uh, I've been a Guardians of the Galaxy fan uh, all along. Uh, to be completely honest with you, never owned a Guardians of the Galaxy comic prior to the movie coming out. Uh, but hey, it's a <laughs> you find something you like and then you go with it. But I, one thing I did want to point out before uh, we actually start the review is um, this is actually the variant cover for uh, number one. And uh, I'm not a variant person, but uh, eh, when I got to the store, that was all that they had left. So you take what you can get. And I always find it funny that this is the team here. You know, the team that we're used to now that we know with, well, with a few additions like uh, Nova and Moondragon. Uh, but I always find it funny to compare it to the original Guardians of the Galaxy uh, team that was from uh, Marvel Super Heroes 18 and uh, just uh, just show you there very different Guardians than we have now as you can see there's only uh, one member in there on the far right which is Yondu who is a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy and that is only for about three or four seconds before he dies in Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2. But nevertheless, we're not here to talk about classic stuff. We're here to talk about the present. So this was issue number one. I don't want to spend too, too much time on issue number one because I want to spend more time on issue number two. I just want to more so highlight just how much I really like the art in these books. There's just some fantastic, fantastic art in these books. The color use of color is absolutely amazing. And I just, I think it's awesome. Now, well, I'm going to read this page to you here because I just think it's an awesome looking page. Nowhere is safe. Hear me, you who cling to life, you who cower in the ruins of your dreams. Tell your fellow, uh, tell your fellows, tell your masters, the wheel is turned. This is no longer the universe you thought you knew. The time of calm is over. The time of fire and lightning has returned. Now is the time of the monsters, and nowhere is safe. Some very ominous words there. Very ominous words. Now, we sort of flip over here. Now, like I said, I don't want to talk too much about it, but the Guardians are on vacation. They're uh, having a barbecue and just uh, enjoying their time off. Quill and Gamora are talking about how they wish that they could just finally sort of retire and get away from it all. Unfortunately, their vacation is interrupted by Nova as he flies down into their campsite. Um, we'll read here again at the top. Rogue gods, Olympians from Earth, they've gone through some changes, some kind of cosmic rebirth and uh, birth, death and rebirth cycle. They've woken up cranky. Now, this is very important, especially once we get to issue number two, because that's when we start to um, see the Olympians. So that's, like I said, why I don't want to spend too, too much time on this issue too, as, uh, right now. So uh, Quill's lying in bed and he's kind of having a dream. 
He's having a dream of a bearded uh, guy saying to him, you were selected to become Star-Lord, Peter Jason Quill. Rarely the opportunity is offered, more rarely still does the opportunity arise. Um, and then he says, do you feel the basis for your life is wrong? And Quill has always sort of been a conflicted character. So he's just kind of keeping this stuff to himself, going about his business. And um, then uh, th we get there on the ship flying around. And then we get introduced here to Marvel Boy. So they're at the the Nova Corps headquarters, uh, which has been deserted. Um, and this is where Marvel Boy is. Uh, he um, He's a parallel universe Cree allied with the Utopian faction. Actually founded that I can walk on those fingernails compounds. He's just talking. Nothing exciting is really happening here. Uh, except I like the little bit of comedy down here between uh, Quill and Rocket where uh, Quill says, uh, I feel so old. Rocket says, you are so old. And he says, actually, I got a question. And then they kind of uh, get interrupted there here for a second. Um, and Nova's there. Nova needs help. Uh, he needs the Guardian's help, even though they're on their vacation. Uh, the Cree Civil War is on pause right now, and um, they're just waiting to find out who the new ruler is. The Skrulls are detonating sun sending war fleets, and uh, basically, all heck is breaking loose, and the Guardians are going to have to try to take care of it. Um, here would be our page of uh, uh, credits, so we'll just talk about that quickly. Al Ewing, the writer. Juan Cabral with the amazing art. Frederico Blee with unbelievable coloring. And uh, VCs Corey Petit with uh, the lettering. So as you can see, these uh, Olympians are sort of starting to come to life. And they're not happy. They've changed. Um, so then they start talking about how, like, there's similarities between these sort of gods and the people now. Uh, she starts telling how she was uh, very similar to Captain Marvel. And then uh, Nova makes the comment, uh, I've spanked gods before. Uh... Richard Ryder, Nova Centurion, he just gives his his, his number. I, I, I like the way uh, Nova acts. It, it, it's kind of funny and formal. Now, here in this shot, it, Nova is in a battle. And just look at this art in this it picture. The, the colors are absolutely wonderful. The contrast between the blue brat background and uh, and the uh, colors in front of it are absolutely amazing. Now, the guy that he's fighting here is, of course, the Lord of the Age, uh, and Age of Laws is over, and the Age of Laws is over. The wheel is turned. Uh, he is the fire. He is the lightning. Um, he, uh, he's the guy to look out for, basically. So Nova responds that he says, he's Zeus, do you understand the terms of arrest? As I have explained them to you. As Nova is, of course, going to try to arrest a god. Now, they're all back on the ship here. They're all sort of trying to figure out what's going on. Like I said... Don't want to get too much into this because I don't want this to be a 25 minute video, but I did just want to point out yet another fantastic uh, piece of artwork here. And it, it and these are, you know, the gods are here. They're making various sort of comments. Uh, they sort of say things like, uh, you know, you hear nothing, you, you see nothing, I can smell 
mortals. So they the the gods are realizing that they are uh, the people that they're up against aren't gonna be formidable by like gods are. But you never know because we're dealing with the guardians of the galaxy here. So um, I just wanted to point out here the bottom panel. He says, intruders in Olympus, I can sense them. Someone dares trespass in my city. It's my very thoughts and I will make them suffer. So you can see that the Olympians are very much not happy with the encroachment of the Guardians. More fighting continues. Like I said, there's not a whole lot going on here except for Nova uh, battling and uh, then, of course, at the very end, we learn that uh, we're going to get some help. So when we flip the page here, we get to learn something exciting. Unfortunately, he's still in bondage, but Hercules is around. And we all know Hercules is a good guy. So he says he's here to help and everything's going to be okay. So I'm going to trust him. So that's uh, the book one. Uh, this is uh, book two. This is when the story really starts getting going. I'll read a little bit of the uh, intro here just because I sort of ran through that there. Uh, the gods of Olympus have returned. However, their resurrection has left them war hungry and their path of destruction has led... Uh, Richard uh, Ryder, Nova, to seek help from uh, the Guardians. Although Gamora turns him away, Star-Lord and Rocket sneak away to join him because they just can't uh, avoid a fight. Philavel, Moon Dragon, and Marvel Boy are on a stealth mission to Olympus. Uh, but of course, Moon Dragon's psychic cloaking has failed, and the Olympians have launched a counterattack. So then... Uh, they are going to meet their new ally, the guy who is going to save the day for them, or hopefully, of course, we're talking about Hercules here. And uh, he is, uh, he says, Her he says his name, he says, son of my father, enemy of this new father, this Zeus of the dark. On my good days, I'm the strongest man in the universe. So that's all fine and good, but he is still in his bonds. So they're trying to uh, figure out a way of how to get them, get him out of there, because it's not. He, he makes the comment, "It's not his kind of strength that can free him." Marvel Boy is there as well. Now we flip over and. Uh, we're going to have uh, more uh, of a rocket here. They've built a bomb. Quill has a bomb that he has constructed that is going to help him um, put a stop to the Olympians or at least slow them down. And that's what happens in this scene right here. She goes to use uh, a bow and arrow on Quill. He shoots her with his gun and turns her... her, her she gets crystallized anyway, or encased in crystal. Now, we flip over here, and we're, uh, they're talking over here. He says, uh, so how do we blow it up without the bomb? This bomb, don't act surprised. I am Hephaestus, the metalsmith of the gods. I built this rotor. I built this whole floating city. I built the automatons that herded you here. So this is the guy who has sort of brought the uh, uh, the Guardians. They think they're going on a mission, but they've actually sort of lured them there. Uh, they tell them to go to hell, and in uh, typical Olympian style, they say, uh, we call it Hades. Flipping over again here, we finally see that Marvel Boy is able to help um, Hercules free from his bonds and uh, now they can go out and try to stop the other Olympian gods. So here is, I, I can't 
express enough how much I really, really like the art here. So we'll just start up here. It says, you show wisdom once, brother. She's talking to Hercules, sorry. You show wisdom once, brother, wisdom for wisdom then. The fool saint will be lost not to return until transformed. The lovers will be united, but even love will not stop the tide of those who wait to sail upon me. A reckoning comes to all of us. And then at the bottom here, Hercules is just saying to her, you know, or sorry, she says to Hercules, I'm going to let you go now, but in the future I will show you no mercy. And Hercules, uh, his benevolent response is, I will always show you mercy. So you know Hercules is one of the good guys. And they're trying to plan this coordinated attack against the Olympians, but Moondragon is having some difficulties with her powers. She's unable to communicate uh, telepathically. Uh, this is causing problems. Uh, Captain Marvel shows up. And uh, Nova, or sorry, I should say over here, Nova gets injured. He actually has a hole punched in him. And um, Captain Marvel shows up and she's going to help Nova. Uh, they ask her if she's going to be okay. And uh, she says, I'll be fine. I got the Nova Force. Better this way. Anyway, so save the others. I'll be fine. It's actually... Is Nova saying that or is Captain Marvel saying that? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. But Captain Marvel is clearly saving Nova. And this is one part of this that I thought was actually kind of very funny. When um, they have the little uh, caption here where it says, The superhero from the superhero dimension doing what superheroes do. She's saving the day. Yeah. Isn't that what all superheroes do? <laughs> couldn't this, couldn't these two blocks be in pretty much any superhero comic? But I just thought that it was kind of funny. But uh, Captain Marvel most certainly saves Nova, which is a good thing. Now we have uh, here where Quill has his bomb and he is now surrounded by the automatons. He's there with the... Uh, with the god who wants to know, wants to know how he managed to do this with uh, his bomb, saying that uh, after he has this surgery, they're gonna know anyway. So uh, what uh, Quill decides to do is to tell them that he's gonna tell them what the secret for his bomb is anyway, so that he doesn't have to have whatever surgery it is that they're gonna do. Of course, Quill decides that he's going to take a different course of action and spears, spears him right through the throat. Um, now, this is where things really start to get interesting because we know that there's this power core rotor thing that was mentioned earlier and Quill has his bomb. And what Quill wants to do is he wants to blow up this Olympian space planet, whatever you want to call it, area, so that they don't have to deal with these problems again. Um, that's sort of what he's showing over here. And then um, they, they take off from the, the plane. Quill, uh, they, they're wondering what's going on because Quill's not there. Rocket can't understand why he can't control the... Uh, ship quill lets him know just remember i can control the ship from uh, my helmet and then he says that he's gonna do whatever it takes to get the job done and he's looking at uh the the, the core or whatever you want to call it it says timer malfunction manual detonation yes no and he also has his bomb with that as well so the guardians on the ship try to override it. Uh, Quill won't let that happen, and that's when these uh, Olympians here show up again. And the, the the comment is, "You, do you know what you have done?" And then go back to when he was dreaming. 
uh, or the, to the guy from where he was dreaming, he says, you were selected. So going back, he had told Quill that he had been selected to be a god. And uh, Quill's not, not exactly uh, down with all of that. And uh, the Olympian says, you have spilled immortal blood, the blood of the gods. That can't be good for Quill. But what Quill does is with his bomb and with that core, he says, you know what? I'm just going to blow everything up. So Quill blows up the whole area, blows up everything. Um, the Guardians are, of course, very distraught about this. Rocket is beside himself. Uh, Hercules is trying to console Rocket, but it's just not uh, working at this point in time. Uh, can see here at the end in another beautiful drawing uh, that the Guardians are upset. Moon Dragon, Marvel Boy, uh, Rocket's crying, and Hercules is uh, hugging him. Now, of course, this is issue number two of Guardians of the Galaxy. Of uh, uh, I don't think that Al Ewing is uh, going to kill off Peter Quill in issue number two of the series. I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, if I were to wager a guess, um, when he was talking to the guy that came to him in his dreams, he told him that he had been selected to be a god. So I'm going to put out a theory that's probably going to be 100% wrong, and I'm going to say that Quill combining his bomb with that reactor or whatever it is and blowing it up, I'm going to guess that it's going to turn him into a god. That's my prediction. I'm probably wrong. But hey, that's the fun of this stuff. At any rate, please like and subscribe to the video. You've been watching a ye old Comic Con review on the Son of the Morning channel, and we will see you on the next video.